Incoming transmission. Greetings everybody, Irish Trekkie, back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection review. This time we have an XL edition here. Today folks, we have the Klingon Katinga class battlecruiser. Yes, this is the ship that we saw in all of our fantastically redone glory for Star Trek The Motion Picture. So today we're going to have a look at this 8 inch model and see if the XL does the Katinga justice. Um, this is one of my favourite uh, alien crafts. For me it's synonymous with Klingons. Um, it has that instantly recognisable um, profile like the bird of prey, like the constitution class. But again, you know, I'm a Trekkie so I'm probably going to say that anyway. Um, but let's see what goodies lay inside the XL box, shall we? Before we dive into the video, I want to give a little bit of a thanks out there to supporters off of the channel. Starting off, we have our Patreon supporters. Thanks to Dan Gunther. Go check out Dan's uh, YouTube page and uh, do follow him on Twitter as well. Great guy um, and again, super positive promoter of the franchise. Thank you, Dan. We have the gentleman over at Geekology. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And again, go follow Geekology on YouTube, Facebook, and all of the lovely Twitter and I believe Instagram as well. But again, two very funny, and again, I think quite positive uh, supporters of Trek in general. Uh, we have Kronos6939. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. Lensman, thank you very much for supporting the channel over on uh, Patreon. We have Idea Machine IM, again, thank you very, very much. Andrew John Quinn, thank you very much for being a Patreon supporter. Gavin Williams, thank you very much for being a Patreon supporter. And Christopher McCooey, thank you very much for being a Patreon supporter. Again, helping the channel on a month to month basis, you all rock. And uh, big shout out to uh, Mr. J Robertus, uh, who is a PayPal supporter as well. So thank you very much collectively. Um, you make the channel as good as it can be. And um, this is my little way to say thank you. And I'm gonna be doing this uh, for my videos uh, moving forward as well. So uh, again, on that positive note, let's jump to the video, shall we? Here we have the Katinka Class Battlecruiser box. It's massive box. I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but listen, take my word for it. It's, a, it's approximately eight inches of a model, so the box is pretty robust and again, unopened. Big shout out to Hero Collector for sending this over. Gives me the opportunity to do a review for you fine folks at home. So without further ado, let's jump into opening it. Now this is not the first XL, nor the first Klingon ship that we've reviewed on the channel, so do check out, I say the Royal We, I don't know why I'm saying We. Uh, check out the playlists in the description below. Will this XL surprise and delight us? So, uh, Katinka class 2271, Klingon Battlecruiser, length 214 meters. And here we have the nice magazine, so we put that to one side. And let's check out the big one, shall we? First impression's quite nice. <laughs> uh, here we have our base. Again, no surprise, but if you're not familiar with the Eagle Moss Hero Collector collection, the bases all look like the ship from Arrival, which is very nice in my opinion. 0518A slash A, Katinga class battlecruiser. Um, our mount would be, I'd say, the traditional Klingon type where it's going to clip over those wings. Um, at this point, this is where I always like to really kind of wedge them in there. Um, it's going to have a nice little rake on it as well, so that's going to be cool. Here we go. Sorry, if I don't know why I started doing that noise. <laughs> uh, here we have the Katinga, everybody. So, let's get up close and personal with this Klingon beastie, shall we? Here she is, everybody. Um, again, very, very nice. We'll compare it to the traditional 
uh, smaller scale run uh, towards the end of the video but um, first impressions very very nice I like the color hue paint apps look quite good lovely sculpt on the ship itself here we have yeah it's kind of looking at the photon torpedo launcher it's quite hard to get in there with the light it, there's a little bit of red in there kind of orange it's okay nice sculpting around the bow of the ship as well again accented with the paint there's window molds in there but they're painting different one yeah the paint there's a little bit of drift pretty good actually the bridge module so again remember the shot was like you know it was kind of something like really weird where it kind of flew around i haven't seen the motion picture in a while now but um that is actually quite nice seams are hidden very well again looking at the bridge module there again the windows are painted and they're pretty spot on i give them that so looking at the dorsal side again the dorsal neck nice detail and nice paint accents you have your klingon emblem your main engine module aft weapons more insignias impulse oops sorry impulse have plastic components on it glorious klingon emblem on the ventral belly again the seams are very well hidden in here which is quite nice nice attention to detail there for the manufacturing of it every surface has paneling detailing And again, that was one of the shots as well, wasn't it? Or was that one of the concepts where you're like super close up to the, the nacelles? Really like this one actually, folks. I keep hitting <laughs> my camera because of the length of the ship. Yeah, I like it. And again, you have some more hull markings over here as well. So you kind of you kind of get that tint the hue where there's like this kind of pearlescent green almost um, and kind of like a shade below with kind of mixture of gray so the light is just kind of bouncing around here and then you have so again different shades all in the same kind of color palette but allows certain details to pop out and then you have your again your red highlights around here as well heavy enough die cast plastic makes sense large, large part of his die cast and again the balance of it is quite central to the the main drive section here again it's one of my favorite klingon ships especially the katinga i like it curious to know what you folks think at home and i'm glad that you know they put detail in you know the weapons ports front one is a little like it's inserted but again it's a little bit lacking but again the aft again the impulse sections are quite nice and again you know the, the overall sculpt and paint apps i think are uh, very much of a win on this let's see what she's like on the stand or how she sits in initially very smooth not too tight not too loose not really going to go anywhere so that's good but uh, yeah let's get some shots of her on her stand so she sits quite nice on the stand um as you can see it does go over the back drive section fairly well again very similar to the smaller uh klingon ships uh that we have again it's just a bigger version of it now we've had uh, a couple of versions of this type of ship but they've really kind of borrowed from the smaller uh, version of it um, big difference in the paint application and uh, a ramp up in i think general detail we'll, we'll compare a little bit um, in some other shots of this but uh so far i really really like it and i do like the color palette 
that they have uh, with this ship as well. Um, now, the level of detail that went into the screen version of this was insane. So I was never expecting like a, like a replica of it, but um, I think they got pretty, pretty close with this one. Now, as you can see here from this angle, you kind of get a nice prominent shot off it. As I said, the detail in the, the motion picture was quite phenomenal. And um, there are some details missing from the ship itself. But I think, you know, I, I do think this is a good model to get, um, especially if you don't have the regular runs uh, from the Hero Collector Eagle Moss line. Um, I think this is a nice, uh, a nice product to actually purchase and um, I just think with the iconic design with the successful sculpt paint applications I think it's a kind of all-rounder in my opinion um, some of you in my home might be thinking like where are the plastic inserts for you know inside the nacelles the kind of the bizarre collectors I think I remember them kind of glowing a little bit so kind of in here um yeah that could have been maybe accented with a little bit of paint or they have had small plastic inserts in the past as well that they could have maybe availed of too um and maybe a plastic insert for the uh, forward facing torpedo rather than the little bit of paint but again because it's in a funnel it's pretty successful so here we have the two katingas now we also have a D7 that I'll show you in a minute as well. But we have the two Katingas, the one from the regular uh, line, and then obviously the XL one that we're currently talking about as well. Now the regular line had a lot of detail on it as well, but you'll see the starkest difference is in the paint apps. You kind of have that full body gray aesthetic to the regular one. So you'll have that difference uh, with the XL version. Now, they were quite successful, as I say, with the regular version to have a lot of detail in the sculpt, but this one has more prominent detailing. Um, it still has a lot of the same detailing that this, this, the smaller version has. However, it just has more, um, what's the word? It's more successful. Um, in addition to what we saw on the smaller one. And again, as you say, enhancing that with the decals, the paint applications across the larger version, that's where I really, really like this one. Now, just for comparison, let's put in the D7. So this would have been the ship from, again, the, the kind of origins of this form factor. So as you'll see here, the form is there it's just the body has been totally enhanced with paneling, hull detailing as well. But again, when you see the two of them side by side, you kind of get that companion piece um, complementing one another. You, you, you see the success of the D7 versus, again, the successes of the Katinga um, motion picture variant of the ship itself as well. Formidable ships from a formidable race from a fantastic franchise. But I'm curious to know what you folks think at home. So we can't ignore the magazine as well. So here we have our XL edition of the Katunga class magazine. 2271 uh, Klingon Battlecruiser, length 214 meters, as I said. Uh, we have the profile of the Katinka and designing the ship. So these are normally kind of more stripped down versions than the normal magazine. So again, that could be a selling factor for these two. Uh, weaponry, disruptors, photon torpedoes, deflector shields, and a cloaking device. As I say, you know, some of the detailing from the motion picture, and again, yeah, there's the, the, the nacelle highlights as well. Some of that is absent from this, but again, it's not an artisan model. It's a, a regular run uh, collector's piece. So the Gatinga Battlecruiser was a classic Klingon warship, a powerful weapon that served the empire for over a century. Again, it was great, at, like again, enhancements, uh, lore <laughs> enhancements um, to the the aesthetic and the, the background of um, the Klingon society and overall culture. And again, these guys faced down a V'ger, not so successfully. 
um, designing the Klingon Battlecruiser. Um, what do we have here? Uh, it's one of Star Trek's most enduring designs, but the producers didn't always think they needed it. Ooh. So this is where you're going to get little bits um, of interest and behind the scenes, like what went into making these TV shows, these movies, and so on and so forth. Um, in my comparison, we looked at the regular Ron Katinga, we looked at the D7, so again, Mac Jeffries designed the Klingon Battlecruiser uh, so that AMT would have another ship to build a model of. <laughs> Sometimes that can happen. He wanted to have a similar, he wanted to have similar components to the Enterprise, which uh, he had also designed, but that the ship would have a different uh, layout. So again, the components were there, twin nacelles, drive section, bridge section, and so on and so forth. See so yeah, how the iterative design, and again, going back to like early Enterprise um, concept art as well, like again, circular bridge section, which to somewhat of a degree it had. Um, but I always like, they look simple, but they're, 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 they're quite informative uh, concept uh, pieces here. And again, we can see more of that as well. Some of these I've seen before, some I actually haven't as well. And again, you know, I, I love this, this, the space, the black color behind it to make it pop out. Again, you know, I took that from Eve's and it's, it's great to see it in other pieces of uh, concept art as well when you're looking at it. Um, so there's gonna be some nice insight here into the model itself, the ship, the production, which I always want to see in these types of magazines as well. Interesting configurations, having the nacelles uh, fixed above versus uh, on the wings as well. And again, some nice um, movie concept art as well, which is fantastic. Here we have a young Andy Probert uh, in shot here as well. Funky classic retro um, Star Trek shirt. And again, here you have uh, added detailing. So again, pictures of the model with pen drawn over it as well, just to add in these kind of greebles, the paneling in here as well, so the kind of feather pattern. And again, which they're saying is one of the bigger, bigger breakouts um, of the successes of the ship itself as well. So uh, yeah, my mind is going right back to how it was, you know, demoed uh, on um, the motion picture as well. The huge detailing along the bridge, the way the bridge is constructed as well, very naval. Uh, more naval than a lot of other um, ships and species that we have seen in Star Trek as well. So it's pretty cool. And again, there was a huge amount of thought put into Klingons in the early movies, um, in addition to what we saw on uh, the original series as well. And again, here we have the filming miniatures as well. A lot of the detail that we see here, you can see replicated on the XL version of the model that we just had a look through. Again, you're always going to have your mountain points for uh, doing those passes. And again, some fantastic concept art over here as well. So I'm not going to dissect the article. I want you folks to be able to enjoy that at home. And uh, there's your magazine. So there you go, folks. Uh, that's the end of the review of the XL Katinga class um, battlecruiser from Star Trek. Um, thanks for stopping by checking out the video. Remember, Full reviews of these guys are available in the playlist, uh, links in the description below. If you want to support the channel over on Patreon or PayPal, the links are in the description below as well. Thank you very much for that support. And if you're new to the channel, check out the other videos. And if you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, you can show your support also by hitting the like button. And maybe you have a significant other that uh, may be interested in this. So uh, maybe share the content with them as well. So as always, thanks for your support and um, I hope you enjoy the video. Have a great rest of the weekend or week whenever you're watching this. I've been your local Irish Trekkie and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy and goodbye.